now that we have taken care of the exceptions let's try to store the data into the real-time database of firebase in the registration part also there are many data that we are collecting from the user which we are not storing anywhere as of now we are just using the user's email id and password to register the user on the app but we are taking full name mobile number and date of birth as well as the gender which we can save in the database because the user object in firebase does not provide us the features of saving all those details into the user object so to save those information we need to save them into the database only there's no other way out so let's see how we are going to do that so get inside the register user method and once the user has been created we can save the data of the user in the database because it is very logical we cannot save the data of the user before the user has been created so we have to first create the user using email id and password once this process is complete we can go ahead and save the data into the database so let's try to do that i will just create one class read write user details and using this class i'm going to save the data and also using the same class i'm going to fetch the data or obtain the data from the database so this class is going to be very useful later also you're going to see it so i'll just write the name read write user details space write user details i'll just define one object of the class equals new read write user details then within the bracket i will just pass the variables which i want to save in the database so the information or the variables are full name, date of birth, gender and mobile number. So I will just pass those variables and I have given the class name read write because the same class will be used to read the data and the same class is going to be used to write the data. It is very logical to give such a name to the class then let me just define the class i will define a simple java class and give it the same name read write user details then getting inside the class i will define the variables for the data that i want to save so the data that i want to save in the database is full name date of birth gender and mobile so i will define those string variables Then we will define the constructor for this class. And if you don't know what a constructor is, let me just quickly give a brief idea. A constructor is actually not a method, even though it will look like a method. But in other words, we can say constructor is a special block of code which is used to initialize a new object. So we are using the constructor to initialize the variables of the class. And it is a constructor because it is not returning anything. So typically the constructor initializes the fields of the object that needs to be initialized. And the constructors, they can also take parameters and because of that we are using parameters with the constructor so here we are passing four parameters with the constructor then i will initialize all the variables of this class and uh, we actually don't have to use this keyword this keyword in front of the field name is not necessary it just signals or tells the compiler that it is the field named full name but anyways i'm just using it to make it look more clear then I will initialize all the variables. Later we are going to overload the constructor that is we are going to have multiple constructors. We are going to see how we will do that. But as of now though this much is sufficient. Then returning back to the register activity class. Now before accessing the database, we have to add required dependencies in the project. So let's just click on tools. 
then on firebase then scroll to the part where we have a real time database then get started with it and you will see that your app is already connected to the firebase now you just have to add the real time database sdk to your app all the required dependencies will be added to your project after that we are ready to use real time database so we are going to create one parent node with the name registered users and within this node we are going to save the detail or the data of all the registered users so we have to get the reference for this node so we will write database reference space you can give any name reference profile then firebase database dot get instance so we'll get the instance of the database with the reference registered users if it is not there then the firebase is going to create such a reference and then return the instance of that reference to our variable then we will use that reference that is the reference profile dot child then within the registered users node we are going to create a new node which will have the name as the uid of the user this uid is unique to all the users so by saving the node with the uid we can refer to the data later very easily so dot child within the child we are going to mention the user id or the uid of the user so a new node is created within registered users then we are going to set the values the values that we want to store in the database so we will use dot set value within the set value we will use the object of our java class that we have just created that is the right user details so whatever data the object of read write user details class has will be added to the database whatever data it is holding it will save it into the database and it is having four variables that is full name date of birth gender and mobile so all those four details will be saved in the database then we need to add one on complete listener so that we can be notified or intimated when this process is over so this uh, add on complete listener is uh, actually an event handler which handles the complete event and it is going to be fired when the transaction successfully completes so in this case since we are setting values in the database so if this event completes successfully then the add-on complete listener will be executed or it will be fired and here inside the on complete method we are going to define whatever we want to be executed and let me quickly just cut these codes that we have commented out earlier and i'm just going to paste it inside the on complete method so that when the on complete method is executed only then these statements should be executed this is what we want or in simple words when the values in the database has been successfully saved or written and only after that we want the email verification to be sent to the user after that we want the new activity to be open so we will enclose this part inside the on complete method all right then let me just quickly define one toast which is going to intimate the user that the registration has been successful and the user is going to receive one email verification link in the inbox all right and also let's check if the task was successful or not because there can be two outcomes the first one is obviously in which the data has been written successfully so it has completed so the task will be successful and let me define the if statement to check whether the task was successful or not so we are going to cut the entire quotes again and we are going to paste them in the if part 
that is if the task was successful only then we want these statements to be executed so i'll just paste them inside in the else part we'll have to take care of the errors so for now we'll just display one toast message and let the user know that the registration has failed all right so this is going to open a new activity that is the user profile activity and since we have not defined it so we will have to define the user activity before we can go ahead and also don't get confused with the on complete method since there are two of them the first one was to create the user then the first on complete method is going to be executed and inside that method we are going to set the data in the database because it is very obvious we have to create the user first before saving any data which is related to the user so the user information has to be there we need to have the uid using the uid we will save the data of the user in the database so for that we are using the add on complete listener again and also this the spelling of reference is incorrect so i'll just correct it all right it won't matter since we are using the same spelling here in the both of the places but it is better to have the correct spelling all right so let me just comment out this part once more and run the app and then try to register and we are getting error that the user is already there because we have created the user before also so because of that we cannot create the user using the same email id and also we have to get rid of this progress bar so in the outermost else part i'll just set the visibility of the progress bar all right now let's get into the firebase console then under authentication let's just delete this user for now because we are going to create user using the same email id again so let us just delete it for now and then open real time database then let's create the database because until we create the database from here we cannot access it we cannot write any data so let's create it and let's start in test mode we will see about uh, the rules that we need to set up in the database so that a user can only access its own data but these rules we are going to see later in this video series for now though let's just set it to start in test mode in test mode the data is available to anyone who tries to access it but since we are not keeping any private or confidential data so we can just set it in test mode as of now then you enable it so database is ready now let's try to register once again let's check in the console and you can see the data is there so firebase has created one node as registered users then within that we have another node which is having the uid of the user and under that uid we are having the detail or the data of the user and if you check the authentication then you can see the user the user that we have just created and the progress bar is still not stopping so let us take care of that also in the if part we have not set the progress bar to be gone because it is not required 
So we want the progress bar to be gone irrespective of the fact whether the task was completed or not. So if the task was completed, even then we want the progress bar to be gone. If the task was not completed, even then we want the progress bar to be gone. I will just cut it and paste it outside the else part so that it is accessible. Alright, and now let's get rid of this full name from the database because in Firebase we can save the name of the user in the user object itself. So we don't have to explicitly save it in the database that is redundant. So we can set the name of the user right after the user was created. So for that get inside the on complete method after the creation of the user so there we will use user profile change request then space profile change request you can give it any name equals new user profile change request dot builder we need to use the builder method for this then dot get display and then within this you can set the name which was in the string variable then dot build then firebase user dot update profile then within the bracket we will give the instance of the user change profile request that we have created that is the profile change request all right then from read write user details we can remove the text full name and since we have defined the class with that variable we need to delete the variable from the read write user details dot java class also so we will remove it all right so there's no error You can delete the user once again or you can create a new user with another email id that is totally up to you but for me i'll delete all the data and then do the registration once again all right so that is all for this video in the next part we are going to do the verification of the mobile number by using regular expression so thank you